Hey guys, what's going on? It's Boo from Ohio High Distilling. We are down at our favorite place, Balmer Peak Distillery, and we're gonna be working on a new recipe of ours. You saw the video for this last week. If you didn't watch that video, check this corner, I think, for a link to that video. There's also one down in the description below. As well in the description, you're gonna see a full ingredient list of everything in this recipe as well as a link to the recipe kit if you want to try it yourself. We do have some news to touch on there, but for now, let's go ahead and start loading our boiler up. So we've removed all our spent grains that have been macerating in here, just fermenting on the grain. And let's take our liquid. We've got our funnel over. Let's pour it in. All right, guys, and our run has begun here. Let me tell you what a gigantic mess those bags of grains were. I messed up everything. My new hoodie, my special little bracelet, my arms are coated with sugar right now, no matter how much I wash this shirt, the table. It was a mess. It's gonna be worth the mess though. This is already smelling terrific. It's a little too much strength of the grains right now. Obviously, it's gonna mellow out as we get through the run a little bit more. But from what it's smelling like, we're, we're having a lot of flavor carryover. We will be able to tell you that if we're tasting that and very shortly here. Now, regarding this recipe kit, guys, literally the day when I started formulating this recipe, I went on to our grain suppliers website just kind of seeing their stock to see how to price out the, the kit, the recipe kit, and found out that one of the grains in the initial recipe, applewood smoked malt, got discontinued. So, had to kind of scrap that batch and replace it with another kind of smoked malt. I did so. It's gonna be the beechwood smoked malt that's found in the recipe. Now, after filming that video, I went back online, figured out grains again, and now mesquite smoked, which is also in this recipe kit, has been discontinued. So regarding the link down below in the description with this recipe kit, get them while, while it lasts, guys. That's all I can say. Um, what I am working on is trying to find a new supplier that will have all those grains because I really want the initial recipe that had an applewood smoked in this kit. That applewood smoked malt is phenomenal. The color is amazing. It's sort of a reddish copper tint to it. The flavor you're getting, it's a nice, beautiful smoke with a tiny bit of sweet, which matches really well with the cherry wood smoked malt in this recipe, which is more sweet and a tiny bit smoked. So they balance each other out really nicely. And so I am working on that. For now, um, please, if you're interested in trying the recipe as is, please look down below in the description. We're gonna have links to it and you're welcome to pick some up. And in the future, I am looking to expand upon this recipe, change it out, and hopefully I can get that specialty order Applewood smoked malt in regularly. That's what I'm kind of working on right now. The mesquite, I think I might have a solution for. The applewood, I'm not so sure right now. So we'll see. So one question we get a lot is how much to take off for four shots. The reality of that is that there's multiple things we have to look at in order to determine that, and they change. Depending on the type of still, whether it's pot still or reflux still, those numbers can change. Depending on what we're running, say fruits over grains or sugar, those numbers change. And how clean your still is, is also gonna determine your amount of heads, which in turn can affect your four shots. So, if you wanna be safe, my number that I go is 500 mils. You don't necessarily have to do that. In a lot of reflux stills, you can get by with a little less. Uh, this is about 350 here. We'll probably fill up some of this jar and what comes after four shots? It's heads, right? And we don't want the heads either. So we'll probably just fill this jar up and call ourselves good, right? And start collecting our heads fully. So uh, we're just waiting for that to happen. We're doing a stripping run with this recipe. And for those who have watched that previous video or have any clue what a stripping run is, you know that the name of the game is to pump out as fast as you can and get as much flavor over. So that's what we're attempting to do. And I'll say from smell alone, I think we've accomplished that. But 
smell and taste are two different things. I don't know if you guys are this way, comment if you are, but some moonshine, some different spirits, sometimes it smells really great. Then you go to taste it and it, something's off, something's not there. And then it can work vice versa too, where it just smells like crap, it smells terrible. And you go to taste it and you're like, oh my God, it is the nectar of a God. So I don't know what that's about. We'll just have to see. We're sitting about 135 right now, which is, is good. It's a uh, standard. I think uh, usually with this torpedo unit and a lot of our other pot stills we make, I would say, I mean, sometimes as low as 120, but 140, 120, 140 is kind of where we're, we're usually sitting at. So that works for me. And as we proceed to fill up our fourth jar, we're starting to get out of those heads and into what we believe is hearts. Um, Got to be honest with you folks, not really doing it right now. We're going to have to see if this mellows out a little bit more. Right now, there's so much prominent smoke. You taste it and it's sweet, but then it leaves sort of like a coating in your mouth almost full of just that smoke and it's a little too heavy it's a little too much so this is the beauty of a stripping run we're getting all our flavor over and remember this is being cleaned up during that second distillation it's definitely going to smooth things out and i think take away some of that which we actually want in this case so i think we can improve and create something that's fairly decent but if this is what's coming out, we're not gonna achieve it in this run. Let's go throughout this run. You guys will see the progress. We'll see if we start liking things. We're still brand new right here. I mean, we can't really smell too much methanol, but I'd wager to say there's probably still a little bit of heads in. So we'll just see how this progresses and hopefully things will smooth out later point throughout this run. If not, we always have the spirit run to take care of it for us. So not too worried about that. Now, another thing with this recipe to keep in mind is that all the grains used in this, these are all smoked malts. The diastatic power, for those who don't know, a diastatic power is a range from zero to 200 that basically, in terms of converting starches to sugar, it's a power rating for that. So all these grains that we're using from what I can see through multiple spec sheets is about 90 diastatic power out of a scale from 200. So these are gonna bring flavor. Um, using with corn or anything with starch, they're not gonna do a good job of eliminating those starches in there. So really, that's why we use them kind of all together without the corn to get that flavor over and also not run into an issue with starch conversion. In the future, we might look at doing this recipe with maybe a, a lighter grain that will balance out the smoke a little bit more. Something like a barley or a wheat would probably be pretty good in this. Um, I'd be, I could use corn with an enzyme as well to help with that conversion rate, but we'll have to see. I think we're getting too far ahead of ourselves. Let's see how everything goes here. I do kind of find it funny how we're talking crap about the recipe. I literally put a bunch of smoky malt in a fermenter and now we're upset that there's smoky flavor coming out. It doesn't make much sense. If you like smoky flavor, you're gonna love it. And I do too, but I think there's a limit and I've had some spirits that kind of overdo it and it makes you a little sick to your stomach. Again, we're beginning the run and there's still things we need to fine tune. So it's not to say that we won't get our desired level of smokiness further out throughout this run, definitely through the spirit run, as I mentioned. Uh, for now, it's just coming over a little too prominently. I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use our controller to adjust the flow on our temperature device. I know this is a stripping run and we're trying to get things out as fast as we can, but I wanna slow our flow down. What that does is it's going to allow a higher proof to come over at the loss of flavor. And I wanna see what that does, see if we can tone down some of that and make it a little bit more refined. So as soon as this jar fills up, we're gonna to switch to our controller. We're at about 11 and a half amps on our controller right now. I'm gonna to try to push things down to, let's see what eight does. And um, we'll see if that changes things. Guys, this is why we experiment here. So it's taken about 20 minutes 
to fill this jar a little under halfway as opposed to like probably five minutes to completely fill this jar in our stripping run output. But this gave us a really good understanding of what things will taste like in our spirit run. That's gonna be when it's cleaner and more refined. Um, so we went down to pretty much a drip, 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 as slow as we could just to see what would happen there. And uh, we're, we're impressed. I think this is a good combo. It still has the spiciness and the well smokiness of the smoke malt and it's smoother it's got a bite to it for sure because i think at this point we'll test but it's probably 160 probably a little bit more but uh all in all i think this is what is going to round everything out together so what we'll do from here is we're going to continue on we've done our experimentation we're going to continue on at our stripping run output which is a pencil lead thick stream and we're pretty assured now because we achieved this that when this all goes back in for our final spirit pass it's all going to taste like it does in this jar so i'm glad we took the time to do that as we plug along here let's talk a little bit about malts in general as a home distiller you're not as binded to certain classifications as a professional distiller would be we call this a smoky malt whiskey because it's made through nothing but smoky malts. Malts as in full on kernel, anything with malt. So no flaked, not flaked rye, flaked wheat, as well as no corn added. It's nothing but malt. So we can classify this as a smoky malt whiskey. A lot of you are probably familiar with a single malt whiskey, which is gonna be really close here. It's just gonna have less of that smokiness to it, right? Single malt whiskey is also known as scotch if it's made in Scotland. Um, they use peated malt to create a scotch. So it's got a very distinct, um, I call it kind of sour, a little bit ashy type flavor to it. A single malt is generally made through, you know, Barley is a pretty common one. People do all kinds of different things, but it's made through one malt um, of the choice. This is three different kinds of malts, and all of these are smoked malts. So we call this a smoky malt whiskey. Pretty simple stuff, but just to give you a little bit of a rundown on, you know, how to classify your spirit, you can make a spirit out of corn and maybe another type of grain. And depending on your ratios of that corn to the other grain, you can call it a bourbon or you could call it something else, you know? Um, same with rye. Rye has to be, I think, 60% rye. It might be 50% to be classified as a rye whiskey. Um, you can change those as a home distiller you are welcome to change those balances around and really find something that works for you if you're getting too much of a flavor from a certain type of malt try switching it down try bringing it down and who cares you're not putting a label on it just do your thing make it taste good to you and that's what we're going to see here um, we don't have any kind of rules to follow with this smoky malt we can play with the grains as we want and I think we're gonna do just that. I think in future batches, um, after this video finishes, I very well might be revising this recipe a little bit and changing the quantities up. Mesquite malt in there is one of those really heavy malts. It's very heavy in smokiness, um, tiny bit sweet, which is nice. Uh, the cherry wood is very sweet, a tiny bit of smokiness. So we end up sort of balancing each other out but if we were to put more mesquite malt in this we'd get more a lot more of that smoke it'd come through very well it's one of those things like cinnamon i don't know if any of you guys have played with cinnamon in your shine but a little bit of cinnamon goes a long way you use too much and it's like eating a hot tamale candy you know so you got to watch out for those balances that's why this recipe is primarily going to be cherry wood malt uh, with a tiny bit of the beech, the beech wood is another one of those like really subtle uh, smokiness. It's really just for balance more than anything else. You're not getting a lot of sweet and you're not really getting a lot of smokiness either. It's very subtle in there and it's just to bring out the character a bit more. So we might play around with switching that beech wood out. Um, hopefully I can find some more smoked grains that would allow me to kind of play with this recipe and get it a little more balanced out. With our slow down flow in one of our jars here, we noticed 
we had a pretty good balance going. We had that sweetness. It's very sweet on the front end. You get in and you get that smokiness uh, at the back. And before, in our beginning, when you got that smokiness, it was coating your mouth very, very heavy, left a bad taste in your mouth. As we settled in and sort of switched things around, adjusted our flow a tiny bit here and there, it began to be a lot more toned down on the back end. Still tasting, you're still tasting all that malt, but it's not like it's something to where you need to have a sip of water afterwards to cleanse your palate, right? And that's what we want. Keep in mind too, a lot of whiskey is going to get its flavor from oak and we haven't even oaked. This is white whiskey. If it's tasting like this as a white format, I can't imagine. What we're probably gonna end up doing is, if you guys remember from one of our previous videos, I think a few weeks back, we toasted oak in an air fryer and it accentuated the flavor of that oak so much. It came through like 10 times it felt like as much. So we'll probably do some experimentation, drop some of that oak in one or two of these bottles. And then what I think we'll also do is we're gonna take an oak stick and we're gonna use an acetylene torch that we have in the back of our shop. Get that thing nice and toasty, drop it right in. And we're gonna, we're gonna play around and uh, play with some different, different types of oak here. But I think oak is going to be phenomenal on this. All right, my beautiful people, we are here in our tails. We're getting some mixed reviews on the tails. We're saying pretty much the exact opposite. We're getting one person that says there's really not any smokiness to this. It's sweet. Um, and then I personally think there is some sweet, but then again, we're seeing that same thing we did in the beginning of here, where at the end, it just hits you with a little too much smoke to be palatable, um, depending on who you are. You know, it's kind of like scotch or like IPAs for beer. Not everyone's a fan. Um, it could just be boiling down to that. Maybe I'm a little more sensitive to the, to the smoke. What we're planning on doing is we're just gonna be doing a stripping run and a spirit run all in one go here today. So we're gonna finish collecting. We're at about 115 proof. We're gonna probably bring that down to 10, 10 proof, 20, something like that. And then we're gonna be doing another run with, uh, with the spirit pass. We're excited for that. So stay tuned for that. Oh yeah, look at this. So guys, here is what we're getting. We are definitely in our tails. Now my problem is I'm seeing some cloudiness, which would be understandable in tails. We're in our fusils. However, I'm not sure why we're getting that color over. Usually color indicates that we're pumping too much through with the heat or our boiler is too full and that color is having a hard time condensing and uh, stripping out uh, in the column. We're not there. Our column is fine. We are at, I think, seven amps out of 24. Um, we are cold on our condenser line. So I don't really know where this color is coming from. I guess this is gonna be a dual video. We're not just doing a recipe today we're also just gonna be seeing how to fix that and showing you guys how to fix that. So we're gonna make a couple adjustments here and see if we can get this color out of our spirit. All right, well that didn't take long. That took about a minute of figuring things out. We are back with no color, clear, still cloudy. That's cause we're in our fusils, in our tails. But it was, it was about heat. What did I tell you guys? On one video I did a little bit ago, we went through stills, different troubleshooting for problems you might face, and most of them were just about turning down heat. Here we are, prime example. Our color is gone um, from simply turning down our controller about two amps. Now, another thing that could be happening that was brought up is what this could be a little bit of is lipids and oils and uh, you know fatty acids and stuff in the grains. That's also a potential thing. And maybe we just got lucky and switched our jars out at the wrong time after we made our adjustments. Um, could be, could be. And we are finally at the finale of our stripping run. As you can see, we pushed the still pretty hard near the end. We got a lot of puking going on, but it's all okay. Because when we distill again, 
all color dissipates. It actually gets separated out in the column to the process. So everything's gonna come out clear still. We decided to do this to kind of speed up that run. Our tails were getting a little bit longer than expected and we wanted to get on this stripping run, this spirit run. So all in all, we are going to, whoops, do most of these. We're gonna keep our heads out of the process. We don't want our heads in our spirit run. So all in all, we're looking at 11 jars. Uh, and then from here, what we'll be doing is we're gonna be filling our boiler up with water to our element line. So once we do that, we can be pretty rest assured that we can take these jars, put them in the boiler, and because they have such a higher boiling point than water would, we're basically gonna be boiling off the alcohol and keeping the water in the boiler. So our element is gonna be safe. Remember this element can't be dry fired, but if we have that water covering that and then our alcohol over that, we'll boil out the alcohol before we even get to the boiling point of water where things would start to evaporate. Does that make sense? So um, that's our plan of attack. We are going to be filling this boiler and proceeding with our spirit run. So right now, we're sitting above here with water. That's gonna leave enough room for that element and also just a little more just to be safe. That's probably about half an inch worth of water above that port right here. So that's just to be a little safe. You could probably get away with less, but why risk it? If our element burns out, we really screwed up. So we want to be better safe than sorry. And then here comes our spirit. No, that's... And now with our alcohol in, we're right about here. So we gained quite a bit of space. I try to keep my ratios about two thirds alcohol to one third water in spirit runs. This is about half and half. Um, I don't think that should matter that much. We'll see. Did you guys miss us? We're in the spirit run now. I felt like uh, two seconds to you guys. It's been about an hour, I think, for us. But we're here. Wow, the initial smells are nuts. That's unique. Nothing like that was in the spirit run. I think that's mainly the mesquite that I'm smelling. It smells a little bit watery, too. We'll have to see what goes on there. So our first jar of our spirit run wasn't there. I think it might be, we might've had a little bit of heads left over in one of our hearts jars that we labeled. Maybe we didn't smell it, indicate it, and it carried over in the beginning of the run and it's currently in that jar. But something was off in that first jar. Um, very potent, very powerful, and had too much of that smoke. We're here in our second and it's gotten 10 times better. Hopefully that'll improve later on. We might even slow down. We're just outside of a, of a stream right now. We're not quite at a drip, not quite at a stream, kind of in between, the still sputtering a little bit. So we left that on purpose so we have a little bit of play. We can go down and up as we need to kind of uh, balance things out. Our proof really hasn't been improved, which usually it is in a spirit run. And I think that's because of the ratio we have. That's why I like that, that two to one ratio, uh, ethanol to water. With that half-half mix, basically we're staying at the same proof because there's an equal amount of water to alcohol. So nothing's really changing in the composition of what's coming to the still. And while we're at it, folks, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching these videos. Thank you for being here. I hope you guys are enjoying the runs as much as we enjoy doing them for you. And if you have the time, please be sure to like the video. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and all of our social media. There's a link to all that down below, our TikTok, our Facebook, our Insta. And uh, we appreciate you guys so much. It can't be a mile high video without us all taking a shot together either. So everyone, please grab your spirit of choice and take a shot with me, guys.
good? Did you zoom in? That's an awkward zoom. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> yeah, again, you know, it's, it's a great spirit. And I wanted, we wanted that smokiness. That's why we made this whole recipe. I'm gonna grab a glass of this, an IPA, and then maybe some like cinnamon sticks and just take them all together and just really just mess up my whole mouth. And then, you know, maybe everything will smooth out together. But all in all, honestly, it's a good recipe. Um, we wanted to make a smoky malt whiskey. Now that it's out and being distilled, maybe we didn't fully want as much smoke as we are getting. It's wonderful, I love getting that flavor, but I think it's a def definite certain palate that needs that smoke and likes that smokiness. And maybe we just didn't like it as much as we initially thought. Um, so to each their own. Um, You'll probably enjoy this if you like that smokiness. And believe me, I do too, to an extent. Um, maybe just not in my spirit. Give me some ribs and then I'll be good. The magic of editing. We are nearing the end of our spirit run. Haven't seen much difference than when we first started. So there's not, not too much to talk about. I think again, I'm, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here. I think we bit off a little more we could, than we could chew with that smoke flavor. Um, it's just, a, for us, I think just coming over a little bit too much. But all in all, we're pretty happy with it. I will be back in a future video with an update after this sits on oak a little bit. In the interest of keeping this video somewhat short so that people's attention spans don't get ruined. Uh, I will bid you guys adieu. I wanna thank you so much for watching. This has been fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And if you guys have any recommendations on different recipes you'd like to see us do, please let us know. We'll be down to do that. But for now guys, thank you again for watching. Please be sure to like, subscribe, Go down to the description below and check out this recipe. Check out uh, different links to our social media. And we appreciate you all so much. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.